yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the invitation, for the kind introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here, uh, and I have to say it's a challenge as well at the same time. Um, I hope I can kind of make a link between the previous talk and, and our talk, and we'll see whether or not and to what extent we might uh, contribute towards uh, sustainability. Uh, my topic for today is kind of introduce you into synthetic biology. So is that something new? What's new? Is it molecular biology? Uh, is it biochemistry? Or is there something really fundamentally, um, fundamentally new? So it all starts with uh, this uh, left-hand um, panel here, understanding uh, the genetic code, um, cracking the genetic code, um, see how genes are built, how genes uh, are interacting. And based on that profound understanding, um, to do a next step and to start into um, construction, constructing life, be an active part of, of evolution. Uh, that is kind of, kind of scaring um, people. Uh, it may um, lead to those statements by the press playing God. Do we, do we really want to play God? Um, definitely we don't want to do. We don't want to do that as scientists. And nevertheless, um, we're going to have and have to have a critical discussion with philosophers, um, having an ethics, bioethics discuss, discussion, having a biosecurity um, discussion. But by, by no means um, we want to create new um, life forms. I'd rather stick to a more technical definition which, uh, which is about synthetic biology, speaking as an engineering discipline to build new biological systems that do not exist as such uh, in the nature. So digging a bit um, into, into detail, uh, we believe that this new discipline, which is highly interdisciplinary, by, by the way, it combines chemistry, biochemistry, mechanical engineering, genetic engineering, electrical engineering, um, we feel that there is down the road that there is a major benefit for different fields um, of our societies. We're running out of um, fossil fuels, and, and I think there is surrogates um, we, can, we can work on. We have to solve an energy problem, and we have to do that in a, in a polite, in a clever, in a, in a smart um, manner. Um, not to burden our, our climate uh, anymore, do it in a meaningful um, manner. We have heard about, about trash. Of course we need some packaging uh, materials, but as we can see here as well, we can do, for example, use biodegradable materials, biodegradable plastics, not relying necessarily on, on mineral oil as a source. Um, we have to fight um, issues regarding nutrition uh, as our world population is constantly growing. Uh, and last but not least, um, we have synthetic biology as a new means um, to fight diseases like cancer, like, like AIDS, major um, epidemics. Now, we have achieved, by the way, uh, quite a bit in the, in the past, also without what we call synthetic biology. Um, we were very successful in, in breeding plants, but this is a tedious process, and it needs decades, it needs centuries, really, to, to come up with, uh, with a meaningful, meaningful crop species, for example. We can accelerate um, breeding by adding herbicides, for example, by adding chemicals, um, just to screen for, to select for um, very um, fruitful crops. And we are right at the border to use biotechnology um, to modify um, plants in a, in a dedicated um, manner um, to help solving our nutrition problems um, worldwide. Um, but still, there is some, some, some randomness in what we, what we are doing. It's kind of still a trial and error game. Breeding is trial and error, and that's why it takes so, so long. So that's natural evolution. And also using biotechnology as we use it today, still to some extent, is trial and error. And of course, we are trying to learn from what we are doing, but it's a trial and error exercise um, still. And it's not what is kind of suggested by the wording genetic engineering. Engineering, classical and conventional engineering, is a very accurate a mathematical um, discipline. Uh, and we're far still, far away from that accuracy in biotechnology. Uh, but that's where we would like to, um, to, to move towards using um, synthetic biology. So the vision is that we really act as, as engineers, very similar to elec electrical um, engineers, just to perform biology based on mathematical models. Mathematical models that finally might result in, in microalgae, which can fix carbon sources, transform the carbon sources um, to, to lipids, and those lipids that can be isolated and converted into, into mineral oil. Now, what's the, what's the current status, and, and how, far, um, how far are we in, in that game? Again, electrical engineering, mathematical engineering is pretty much based on, on knowledge, on exact and mathematical knowledge describing more or less complex processes. And there is a kind of a construction cycle. We need to specify what we want to do. We design. 
we model in silico, in computer models, uh, then we put into practice, we implement, uh, and then we test and validate, and eventually we have to go through a second and third construction cycle. But all this is based on knowledge, and all this is based on very specific and accurate mathematical um, modeling. So how about, how about biology? W where are we there? We unraveled the genetic code. We can read the human genome. And this, and this, this guy here, he said, well, um, damned hackers, now I have to change the password. <laughs> is, that, is that really true? Do we, ha do we have to change the, the, the password? Did we, by just reading the, the sequence, which is a four-letter code, by the way, compared to our alphabet, which is like 26 letters or so, um, we have here just four letters, and those four letters, they, uh, they, make, they make the life. They make you sitting here. Uh, they make whatever you see if you go out of this, uh, out of this room. Um, now, is that the truth? Do we have the solution for all our problems with just reading those four letters? No, we, we don't. Um, nevertheless, there is an increasing amount of reading sequences, um, of getting access to this genetic um, alphabet of different species, information in terabytes, filling skyscrapers if we add those up to the moon even, um, but still we do not really exactly understand biology. So there's a couple, a couple of hurdles that we still have to take. And yet there is an increasing amount um, of information um, around. Information that has been generated by disruptive um, technologies, and there is machine um, exhibited here um, as well from, from Iron Torrent, which still is going to speed up reading sequences. But reading sequences is like, you can see that, can see that here, and I'm trying to use the picture throughout the, the rest of this talk. It's like, well, it's, it's a, cr a kind of a crowded, crowded message. It's no distinction between words. There's no spacing between the words. No, there's no spacing between sentences. And this does not really give you any, uh, any information. And you can see here the genetical alphabet. It's just four letters. But just having the letters doesn't give you any meaningful information yet. So you, you, don't, you don't really read and you don't really um, understand what you, what you have here. Now, to better understand, and this is the only technical slide, and don't want to dig into, into detail here, there's a couple of analytical experiments that popped up during the last years, and this helps us to identify the single words. And let's compare a word with a gene. And once you have separated the words, you can identify sentences, which is like a connectivity between words, connectivity between genes forming a functional um, unit. But still just reading a sentence, you may understand the sentence, but you do not yet still under understand a paragraph, and you do not yet understand uh, the meaning of a chapter, and you do not at all understand what the book really wants to tell, wants to tell you. And those analytical experiments, um, they show the beginning and the end of a gene. They can tell you how the gene is translated into messenger, how that messenger is translated into protein, how the proteins interact in a, to a larger network, how the proteins, by interacting, form a cell, and how different cells form, form an alg algorithm. We are not yet at the end. Actually, we are just at the beginning to understand. But we have reached a stage where we can try to decipher words, to decipher genes. And in addition to just reading and identifying the genes, we start to write genes. Now, we are just at a level where we make a shift from reading to writing to creating something really new. Um, and that's what I want to show you using just a single example. Uh, and that's how we founded our company like, like um, 12 years ago, uh, which is, by the way, named Gene Art. It's the art of designing genes. It's the art of writing genes and the art of combining genes to something more meaningful. And the, and the example, actually, we stepped into that field was um, we were and still are developing an HIV vaccine. And you know that by infection with the virus, people get sick and people are dying. Now, if you want to go for a vaccine and just take the individual genes as nature has evolved them, uh, that's probably not a good idea. So that, like 10, 12 years ago, we were sitting down and trying to figure out what is the parts of the genes that we would like to have, that we would like to, to, to use. Just take away harmful pieces and just combine 
to the meaningful pieces of which we thought they might be available for a vaccine component. Now, we kind of built a new gene, something not existing in, in nature, like building a new word, inventing a new word. Um, and then we, after having designed it, we, we wrote that. And then we brought that into an experiment and for a sudden realized, wow, this is working out nicely. We're gonna get the immune responses that we would like to see. And we brought it towards a phase two trial, which has a very, very fair chance to become the largest um, phase three efficacy trial in, in the future. So from that, now 10, 12 years later, um, we for a sudden see that understanding the genes and now being able to write the genes that already changed the world, at least the world of the vaccine developers, at least the world of the pharmaceutical companies that are going for, for new drugs. And this is just an example for pharmaceutical, um, for, for the pharmaceutical space, but there's other examples from other life science disciplines. So that's a very universal and new technology based on understanding, start writing genes. But those still are single genes, um, again, referring to single, to single words. And if you see the, the, the kinetics of the development here compared to electrical engineering, there has been a logarithmic um, progress in bytes and kilobytes and megabytes and ter terabytes in the informatic space. Uh, there has been, again, a logarithmic um, development, as I've shown, uh, in the understanding of sequences, in the reading of DNA. And there is, again, a logarithmic development in writing genes, although this is still a very, very young um, discipline. Now, combining individual words, combining individual genes and giving them some sense is like understanding the, the grammar of writing. Understanding the grammar allows you to pick individual words out of their context and to combine them to something totally new, giving something a new meaning. That's like playing Lego. Take a yellow piece, take a blue piece, take a red piece, a big one, a small one, and build out of individual pieces, out of individual parts, to build something totally new. Uh, that has also been um, performed already, just taking a pathway, as we called it, a couple of pieces, a couple of parts from a plant and transfer that into a yeast cell. And that yeast cell is going to produce a precursor um, of an anti-malaria um, medicine. And how you do that is you take those individual parts, combine them in a meaningful manner based on a better understanding and transform those um, into yeast cells and the yeast cell uh, is able to produce uh, the new compound. Now, the message I would like um, to leave you with is, the better we understand characters, words, combined to a sentence, combined to a paragraph, combined to a chapter, and finally combined to the whole book, understanding the whole picture is the basis to enable deterministic design based on mathematical models. And that's our current, our current challenge. Again, using the analogy to electrical um, engineering. Electric, electrical engineering based on mathematical models uses parts, uses circuits, uses chips, building computers and building the worldwide map. And the same is true um, for synthetic biology where genes are combined to biochemical reactions, are combined to pathways which add up um, to what the cell um, is and different cells to organs and maybe to organisms. There is, of course, there's challenges. Uh, and the analogy to the mechanical engineering, to the electric, electrical engineering, um, has some, some difficulties. So you can see, for example, on that, uh, on that iPad, you can see that there is a thermal spacing, that there is, um, that there is an, an electrical spacing between the individual um, elements. And that's not, that's not true to that extent, at least, if you look into a cell, if you look into a bacterial cell, if you look into mammalian or human cell, so there's one single diffusion space. And those are the issues we have to, to deal with, that we can kind of compartmentize different processes within the cell um, to build something really new, um, which uh, nature doesn't uh, know yet. This is the vision where we would like to, to go to, and we have achieved quite a bit um, all, already. So we are on our way, and I'm gonna show an example on, on biofuels produced, for example, um, by microalgae. I've shown you an example of a new medicine which would not have been possible like, like 10 years ago. 
to transform, use a pathway and transform that pathway um, into a yeast, yeast cell. It's an artificial system. Um, we are on our way to produce, produce fine chemicals um, in bacterial cells. I've given you an, an example of a completely new concept for developing a, a, a vaccine. Now, this is what modern synthetic biology already looks like. Biofuels produced in, in algae. And that's a real test site already. Microalgae fixing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and converting this carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into rich lipids. And those lipids can be harvested and by one or two further steps down the road can be transformed into biodiesel. And this is not really any ambitious vision um, anymore. So this could be like in San Diego, this could be in Africa, that could be in Europe, in, in, in Spain, have huge plants of algae farms kind of contributing towards solving um, our energy problems. And that's how it could look like in the future. So actually, have, you have to say that looks quite similar to nature, um, what, what nature has evolved. Algae trees, if you, if you want. So it looks even nice, may even be artistic. Uh, that's where we would like um, to go. With this, I would like to conclude um, and say thank you for your attention.